Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Just wondering, is the quality of racing getting better in Gran Turismo Sport? The answer may be a big resounding no for many of you, but I think for me, as my driver rating has gone up to A and sports, uh, sportsmanship rating has gone up to S, I think you can make an or I think I can make an argument that it has got slightly better at least. Um, I, I think these couple of races you're about to see here may well show that. We're about to see. Uh, this is uh, the Kyoto driving part. I'm driving the uh, Renault Megane in, of course, Group 4, the, the Megane Trophy, if you like, or the Megane Cup, essentially, as this car does seem to be well and truly OP, uh, much like its ancestor, the other Megane, uh, previously. Um, but there are a couple of cars, a couple of guys who have chosen different machinery, um, a couple of guys I noticed up at the sharp ends, I think someone's gone for the TT, someone for the Viper. Uh, the Evo can give the Megane some trouble. So there is a chance that something other than the Megane might win, which is good to see. So perhaps isn't completely overpowered, we, we, uh, we shall see. So this race, a couple of things are going to happen here, a couple of trends I've noticed. So you see here, uh, Car side by side, this is something that I'm always trying to take advantage of. Something I'm always, I'm always looking out for. Um, so when two cars are side by side, especially I mean when they're right ahead of you, uh, it's something you can often capitalise on because if, if, there's, if there's two people side by side or three people side by side, it can be more than two, then there's a very good chance that, or it's, it's certain that one of them is in, in an optimal position. You can take advantage of that and often follow through the guy who's on the inside. So this is something that's going to happen quite a lot here, especially because the racing is so close. You see, I think Group 4 does offer some of the very closest racing in the game, um, especially, I, I suppose, because everyone is choosing the same car, uh, the Megane, or near enough anyway. So we've got that situation developing here almost. Are they quite side by side? Not quite. I am going to go up the inside, though, of the Belgian. He has got a penalty and he's going to sink down one position, so down to 11th for him, up to 10th for me. So a fairly slow and steady lap to begin the race, just gaining one position thus far. And again, the situation is going to kind of arise here as the two Spaniards go side by side. I'm going to go for the deep line, I often go for that line, uh, heading onto a long straight which we've got coming up here. And it kind of worked out for me there because uh, the inside guy, the yellow, car, kind of got hemmed in on the inside, couldn't get on the power as early as he would have liked. I had the sort of more open outside line. Go up into ninth, so a steady first lap, two positions gained from 11th up to 9th. Can we make similar progress now on lap number 2? So again, as I'm saying, or well, as I said on lap 1, the racing fairly close. Um, the qualifying times prove that as well. I think as you improve your driver rating and your sports, uh, sportsmanship rating, the the quality of the lobbies that you get put into is definitely higher and as a result of that, the, the driver quality is higher and therefore the, qualif the qualifying times are a lot closer. So I set what I consider to be a very good lap here, but it was only good enough for 11th place. And I think just a couple of attempts would have put me up well inside the top 10, so it just shows you how close it is. Down the hill, into the hairpin, Spaniard up the inside, bit of contact, but again the side-by-side -side situation has developed here, and the uh, the Brit kind of just really shoves the Spaniard a little bit wider than he would have liked, and I'm going to take advantage and follow him through. Up into 8th, so another position gained, and uh, that's 3 so far, we've got a nice close pack up ahead, the battle for 5th rages on, in fact no, the battle for 4th this is, so there's about 5 or 6 of us involved the long left-hander this car absolutely loves this kind of corner and i think that's why this car is so strong around here um, the, the long long corners there's plenty of them around here the brit up the inside a little bit late on the brakes he's gonna shove the italian wide and make contact with the spaniard and um, by the way loving that uh, mild seven livery on the renault up ahead the spaniard so again, side-by-side -side situation, we're going to try to follow through the Spaniard on the left-hand side, sort of the inside, and there we go, on the brakes, nice and late. Tiny bit of contact, a bit of a rude pass, but we are up into sixth position. So there we go, another one, that, another one of those situations. Two cars side-by-side, 
kind of follow the guy through on the inside as long as it kind of depends how they may overtake the, the other guy it, the situation can't always develop in your favor but sometimes it does there's always something to look out for so rounding out the final corner of the lap we are now moving on to lap three it's only daily race b three laps in total it's a short race short dash to the finish fast and furious but that is often the Gran Turismo way. Setting the fastest lap of the race, interestingly, on that lap, I'm, I'm the fastest car on the circuit at the moment, which kind of bodes well, I suppose, for this lap. Kind of sh perhaps shows that my qualifying time could have been better if I am, in fact, maybe faster than all these people ahead of me. But anyway, continuing up the hill through the S's, um, tucked in behind the slipstream of the Spaniard, not really enough to get past him though. We are in the same car so it can be often very difficult to kind of get a pass done so through the long left slipstream now in operation as we go over the crest down into a very good overtaking opportunity this one so we're looking for the chevrons on the left hand side breaking halfway between the first and second or the white lines on the side of the circuit it's a very good move actually and he kind of really left the space open semi-defensive into the next left he's no way in hell going to be able to go around the outside so we have moved up into fifth position. That was a really good pass, actually. Really, really enjoyed that one. You see, first, second, and third really are not far away. If this race was just a little bit longer, maybe two more laps, then it could have been a really interesting race for first, possibly, if it had really gone to plan. So the guy ahead, <laughs> a really entertaining name. Please fix penalty. Really enjoying that. As we now come up into another hairpin to round out this part this section of the circuit so we look up the inside the Audi a little bit deep and then looking to come back and I should kind of put my nose in where it kind of wasn't really welcome and uh, get a bit of a nudge a helping nudge in fact from the Spaniard behind so we get a bit of a helping hand which was good as I kind of got a poor exit off the, cor off the corner Irishman goes very very narrow blocks his position good defending and I, I, there's no way past for me at all there's a good defence and he may as well defend because it's the last lap and there's no chance of third and a bit of contact between the Irishman and the Spaniard I think a small nudge in the back from me and well obviously a big enough nudge because I'm going to get a 10 second penalty and ironically his name is Please Fix Penalty so absolutely scintillating timing from him to be in the right place at the right time there for that meme of the day meme of the race so then uh, it could have been fourth it could have been fifth which I am in now but it's going to be something way further back as well there we go getting rid of the penalty it is quicker to slow down to serve it I, I say I lost maybe about six seconds there disappointing 12th we finished further back than we started after such a good rise through the ranks I'm not gonna I'm not gonna quit on such a bad note we're going to have to try again and see if we can go any better. I did set a quicker qualifying time by a couple of tenths, but um, still starting 11th, so the field technically probably better here. Uh, faster, play faster players in this race. We've got Ferrari, a Frenchman. I'm going to look up the outside into the S. It's not really going to work, so I'm just going to have to back off slightly to let him resume 10th place. He's going to put me on the back foot in terms of of an attack from behind doesn't quite materialize though so once again very close race at the front uh, we've got a couple of the SPR guys Spanish team and they seem to be going very very well indeed I think the top three are still the, the same top three from the the last race so Frenchman in front Frenchman behind and the Renault comes out of nowhere punts him off completely he's got he's going to be slapped with a penalty now that that deserves a penalty. I'm not sure what penalty was all about in the previous race, but um, I'm going to capitalise up to 10th. Now we've got to get um, get this gap down. So that wasn't a really that wasn't a good start really because the the Ferrari was a bit all over the place on the first half of that lap, kind of slowed me down by maybe a second more than I would have liked. You see the gap now. Two guys ahead. I think it's that Mile Seven Renault uh, once again just ahead. So plenty of the same names. I think Police Figure Penalty is there once again. I'm going to avoid him like a plague. I don't really want to get the curse of the penalty 
by just tapping in in the rear end. You see just how close it is. Now this is the question I posed at the beginning of the video. Is the racing quality, quality getting better? I think in many ways it is. I think I'm, I'm looking at this race and I look at the previous race. It was obviously very disappointing to get the penalty at the end. But I think on the whole, I think a lot of people are capable of respect, are capable of driving in a dignified manner. And I mean, look at this, we're not smashing each other off. It's not a complete shit show. It can somewhat uh, go to plan. And you see that the Spaniard wisely backing off. So, you know, some some clever, some, some intelligent driving, uh, opting to not go through there side by side, which basically never ends well. So now on the front foot, looking to try to get uh, momentum past Sopranos, the Belgian. Have I got a nose alongside? I can't quite tell. I don't think I have. I'm going to keep it there and look for the move. He moves over early. He's going to re uh, resume his eighth place. So a strong defence, but I perhaps should not have had my nose that far alongside. Always risking that. Uh, when, you, when your nose is kind of one millimetre alongside, uh, the other guy kind of is going to chop, you know, chop across you, and you shouldn't really expect that. So I'm going to keep ninth for now. I'm going to look to try to get through this pack. Please fix penalty, going very defensive. As In fact, look at the group ahead of, of us. I mean, there's a group of four ahead. First place is gone, then uh, second to fifth. Very close fight. And then sixth to ninth. Now I'm, the battle I'm in here, again very close. Three people side by side. I'm going to go uh, on the outside and look for the cutback on the second half of the corner. And that is exactly... What I wanted to happen. Is there someone on my inside? Yes, there is. I'm going to leave my car whip. But we saw in the previous race, you can kind of get better momentum by having that wider line. And it's worked. Gained two positions through that hairpin complex. And now, myself and the Italian here are going to try to reel in this big group ahead. Uh, the guy at the back of that group, in fact, does have a penalty. I've gone in early here. Looking up the inside of the Italian, didn't quite materialise. And. We're really going to try to make inroads into this big group. I think second place has just wriggled free. First place is a good couple of seconds ahead. The Frenchman there at the front of this group, or just pulling away from the group, he's got a nice little buffer there, maybe a second or two. And you see that the Italian just giving me a bit of space. He kind of saw that I was half alongside, and in many occasions I would have expected that I would have been run wide. And uh, this guy actually just gave me the room and I could have really forced him a little wider here but it didn't really happen and I just scared him off into accelerating early he has got a wheel alongside, is he going to back off? I'm going to give him a car whip because he hasn't backed off ok fair enough, and through the corner we go it's actually good racing, we're giving, we're giving each other a car whip either side is he going to look for the move into the final corner? yes he is, a bit of contact, I kind of anticipated it and we're going to come through there and secure sixth place. One lap left to go. This is going rather well this race and the three guys ahead all have penalties. It's going to be very very close indeed. I don't think the guy ahead, oh, sorry behind, is quite close enough for a move. He just about is though and it's gonna be one of those, oh, he's just gonna run me slightly wide. He is through up into sixth place. That is quite a frustrating move to be on the receiving end of but uh, we, we're gonna have to rebuild here and try to go again. Batting for Sopranos through the chicane section is a good fight. I'm just about going to get through. That's someone else uh, going off very slowly. So someone has turned into a victim from that group ahead. And now I, I sense the battle between myself and the Italian is actually the battle for third because uh, third and fourth both have penalties. In fact, if, if they both have penalties that are big enough, then we should be fighting for third place here. Uh, once we cross the line. So the German there in fourth going, uh, going for the Viper. He's surrounded by McGann's using uh, unfamiliar territory here. Although I think the Viper is actually surprisingly a really good handling car. It's, it's a car I would have thought would be good on power but then that's just a kind of a lazy stereotype of American cars to be good on power and just bad on handling. But that, that Viper is actually very very good at, uh, in terms of handling. So again going in very very narrow to begin with, I think this McGann, he just loves this corner, he just absolutely loves it and I, I, I actually think this car has infinite downforce, it, it just seems to love it so much when you've got these long, long corners, long fast corners. Looking on the outside of the Italian, I kind of just tried to run him narrow 
it didn't really pay off for me at all as I kind of just get bumped a little bit wide I kind of turned in a little bit too early so with not too many corners left to go in the race is there a chance of salvaging fifth and then potentially fourth or third as a result of the penalties ahead there is perhaps a chance I think maybe the final corner is our final opportunity the chicane coming up isn't the best overtaking opportunity plus I'm way too far back to go for a move it's not really a place you can go for a lunge and it hasn't quite worked out that way just kicked up a little bit of grass though is it possible into the final corner he's gone he's gone defensive i'm gonna look up the inside on the exit and wow um bit of contact and it's kind of gonna it's just gonna unsettle the car i'm gonna lose plenty of momentum i'm gonna get overtaken by the spaniard by the belgian that is a disappointing finish and i'm gonna uh, round out the race in eighth position I think the contact there on the final corner, it looked a bit weird. It didn't feel as though I was that close to him, but obviously I was. I think there might have been a minor co uh, connection issue, but ultimately a disappointing end. I kind of bottled it, really, both races. Uh, but ultimately, I think that both the races were very, very good. Um, if you ignore the kind of minor errors or minor sort of problems at the end of each race, I think the quality of the racing was actually fairly good. Now... You've seen this kind of trend in previous videos. I don't really like to end on such a sour note. I'm making good progress and then losing it all on the final lap or final corner is never good to see. So it's always good to uh, end on a positive note. And we're going to do that here. So this is daily race C in uh, group three. Now I've gone for the Lexus. I, I absolutely love the Lexus. I, I did a practice lap in the 911 and the 911 was uh, uh, infinitely easier to, to handle, especially through that corner there, Dunlop. The, the, the 911 just seemed to have so much more grip and didn't really want to spin up the tyres. The Lexus, on the other hand, it did want to spin up the tyres. That is, that is a problem. But I, 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 I love the challenge of working out a car, working out what's good, what's weak, and trying to adapt your driving. So something... I've noticed gear choice is really important and I was driving through Dunlop Curve in third but then I worked out that if you just put up to fourth it doesn't really bog down at all but you just get so much better traction the car doesn't want to slide anywhere whereas in third it kind of wants to spin up and uh, slide around a little bit too much up the inside of the Belgian it was a really strong move into Spoon I sensed he was kind of slowing me down a little bit I wanted to get the pass done because I sensed the, the Frenchman in the lead was pulling away and this is lap number four I kind of narrowed down the gap a tiny amount which is always surprising because the pole man often does just drive off and he can never catch them uh, so I was actually quite surprised I was actually able to really get my head down and start catching um, so regarding that move on the Belgian strong move there wasn't contact and I didn't get a penalty so I mean you be the judge of that was it a good move was it a bad move it was it was aggressive but I, I don't think there was actually any contact. It was just very, very close, and it just ran in wide. It was on the limit, let's put it that way. So through here, in fourth gear, and that's why I meant the car kind of just settles down a lot nicely, a lot more nicely, whereas if you're in third, you'll get more speed, technically, because the car wants to rev up higher, and you can accelerate faster, but you didn't really like it. You, know, you want to slide through that kind of corner. So gaining very nicely onto the back of the Frenchman. I was kind of fuel saving at the same time by revving not too much about halfway up the gauge but I think once I get this close I do like to rev out a lot more just to just to really put the pressure on the on the guy ahead and the beauty I think of GT Sport is that you never quite know how uh, the other drivers are, are driving in terms of fuel saving so I, I'm catching up with him is it because I'm just driving better or is it because he's fuel saving more than I am that's always a question to try to answer and we're going to find out in the pit stop phase, I suppose, but it's just never quite know. I've got the run here, though. Once you're within that couple of attempts, you're going to get that slipstream, start picking it up. And I've done exactly that on the run up to 130R. On the inside, I have to break a little bit more than normal because we are taking a far narrower line. Breaking about 125 metres before the corner, we've hit the apex nicely. And we have moved up into first place so that was a rather successful start to the to the race moving up from third up into second on lap one and now 
up into the lead at the beginning of lap number five. Looking behind, gap not uh, too close actually. I've pulled out half a second already into the first corner, hoping to not get sucked off on the Astro. And we've got away with it. And I don't think the Frenchman did because the gap um, just rapidly rising. So I think he got tempted and he actually got sucked off. And it's gonna, well, it's not really gonna help his, his cause here because. It looked like a, a fairly balanced race up until that point. As we come into the pits, he did save more fuel than I did. I was on 26%, he was on 31 So he did a slightly better job there. But um, that mistake is going to cost him a couple of seconds, and that's pretty much fatal because of how close it was. So at, at the end of the uh, pit stop phase, pulling out, and really that was the race done. Um, that mistake that he made, um, getting tempted to get sucked off, it really... It was fatal for his race, basically. And you see, he comes from the final corner, just really backing off to make sure I don't make any mistakes over the line. I think once you've got that margin of about, of about five or six seconds, there's just no point in risking it. If your car's going to slide, just back off, let the car settle, and then go again. And if you see there, a comfortable victory. So it's not all doom and gloom. I am actually capable of doing good things, just not all the time. But there we go, guys. I do hope you enjoyed the video as always. Let me know your thoughts, and I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.